Every Little Bit Hurts by Michael Avlon The Impala gleamed shiny and red on the sloping driveway. Bobby ran towards it, eyes twinkling, clapping his hands. He and Daddy were going for a ride. He paused, a bit puzzled. While his father lifted the hood and studied the engine carefully, peering at the electrical terminals of the starter, to be sure no new wires had been added. Wires which could connect to a dynamite bomb. Jameson hadn't been that careful, and Jameson had been killed. Bobby, of course, had no way of knowing the reason of his father's action, nor did he thought to remain with him long. All he knew was that he and his father were going for a ride, and Daddy had strapped on his gun, even, right under his coat in the dark leather holster. The large man closed the hood, satisfied with the inspection, smiling at the boy. Remember, Daddy was saying, don't ever throw anything out of the car, understood? It's not nice, especially when Daddy's driving fast on the highway. It just isn't nice, Bobby. You could hit another Daddy in the eye and cause an accident. Do you understand? Bobby nodded, tugging at the big Impala door. Good boy. I knew you'd understand once you knew the reason. Mommy will be proud of you when I tell her. Bobby smiled. The words were running around in his head like happy puppies. Mummy. Proud. Good boy. When you're only five years of age, those words are glowing beacons of progress and love. But above all, progress. The march forward, the long trip towards that mysterious land of growing up. Where are we going today, Daddy? Police station again? When Daddy took his gun, it almost meant the police station. Daddy's got to go to Elmira, Robert Black Sr. said, a funny glint in his eye. Part of the job, too. I have to go to the district attorney to hand over some papers. You know, I told you. We'll meet Mommy there, and then maybe we'll take in a movie. Where would you like that? paused, lighting a cigarette from the dashboard lighter. Bobby watched him, bursting with ride fever and pride. He liked the sure look of the strong hands, the keen profile of his father, sharp, like the face on a coin under a pork pie hat. Daddy had told him that once, when he had remembered, what a funny name for a hat. Maybe Porky the Pig wore pork pie hats too. Mommy's in town? Bobby prodded with that unswerving curiosity of the young. That's right. Shopping. She took the bus. You were sleeping. I miss Mommy. So do I, but we'll see her soon enough. Daddy did some things with the dashboard and the wheel, and the car motor roared. Bobby liked that sound. It always meant going places and doing things, though not very often with Daddy. Daddy was always away, packing bags, calling on the telephone from faraway places like Washington, D.C., and hardly ever having time to play games or, or go walking in the woods. Bobby wasn't too sure what Daddy did. He didn't go to work like the fathers of his friends, or leave the house in the morning and come back the same day for supper, or play catch. No, nothing like that. Bobby only knew that the big man's work had something to do with the shiny badge he had seen pinned inside the black wallet that was sometimes left on the bureau in the bedroom. That and that scary gun he sometimes saw when Daddy was putting on his jacket. He remembered he had once tried to pick it up, 
and his father had been very cross with him for it. Bobby knew he'd never to do that again. Robert Black Sr. patted his son affectionately on the cheek and released the emergency brake. Bobby knew that he, what he was doing. The brake always made a funny sound when Daddy touched it with his hand. Now, Bobby, what is you going to remember? Not to throw anything out of the car window. Right, so if we stop for candy or gum, you'll fold up the wrappers neatly and give them to me, and I'll put them in this ashtray, okay? Okay. You know, the last time when you tossed that paper bag out of the car window, it blew all the way back against the windshield of the car right behind us. The man couldn't see where he was going or what he was doing. He might have gotten hurt, and you wouldn't want that, would you? No, Daddy. Good boy. Well, we're off. Daddy backed the Impala down the driveway. The line of trees looked so pretty in the sunlight. The big man turned the car around, heading it out towards the highway. His thick wrists relaxed, his large hands holding the wheel tightly. Bobby recognized the big school building with the American flag flying above it. Next year, he'd be going there like the rest of the kids. He sank back happily against the soft seat and folded his arms. It was nice going someplace with Daddy for a change, instead of Mommy. Mommies were nice and fun too, when they went to stores and places, but Daddies were better, and Daddies never cried while Mommies did, like last night. Daddy, who was that man on the phone last night? The one who said something to make Mommy cry? Was it the man who got hit with the paper bag? Did he want to spank me? Robert Black Sr. smiled. But it was a humorless smile. A grim smile. No, son. It was a bad man. It was a man who thought he could keep me from doing my job if, if he threatens. Robert Black Sr. suddenly closed his mouth. It was just a bad man, son. Forget it. Why did Mommy cry? I told you to forget it, Bobby. The man wasn't very nice like the big bad wolf in Red Riding Hood. Or in the Three Little Pigs? That's right. Don't worry. He won't call anymore. Not after these papers are delivered in Elmira. Robert Black Sr.'s mind was on the road and the traffic. Robert Black Jr. was thinking of all the things he could tell Mommy that happened that morning after she left. About the loose front tooth, the striped kitten he had found wandering in the backyard, that nest of chirping sparrows in the carport, and the wonderful breakfast of French toast with syrup that Daddy had made. Daddies could cook good too, just like Mommy's. Daddy? Yes, son? What does FBI mean? Robert Black Sr. chuckled. <laughs> Who told you that? I was watching television with a couple of other kids and they said you were a FBI man. Are you, Daddy? Billy and Gary, I imagine. The neighborhood stool pigeons. What we need are about eight guys like them available to the department. Well, they were telling you the truth, Bobby. I'm an FBI man. What's that? Some kind of policeman? That's right. It means the Federal Bureau of Investigation. That's my job. You knew I was some kind of policeman, didn't you? I guess so. The Impala zipped ahead going around a flying big blue car. Daddy drove like a race car driver. Bobby beamed proudly. Is Mommy glad you're an FBI man? Robert Black Sr. shook his head, amused. 
Sometimes I wonder, son. She gets afraid? Like last night? Sometimes. Women are like that, son. But it's a man's job, you know. And somebody has to do it. Bobby nodded his head wisely. I wouldn't be afraid. I'm proud you're FBI man. Honest to Pete I am. Thanks, Bobby. Robert Black Jr. glowed, glanced at his father, and was surprised to see the smile on the sharp features suddenly change to a frown. His mind searched for a reason for the obvious displeasure. What's the matter, Daddy? I didn't throw anything out of the window. His father's attention returned to the highway. A smile on his lips despite himself. No, but you did something almost as bad. You didn't fasten your seatbelts. You always said you were big enough. I am big enough. Bobby's voice was stout. He pulled the buckle from his place between his father and himself and then reached down between the seats and the door of the spring retractable tongue that wound itself up into its holder when not in use. Like that turtle Gary used to have, pulling its head whenever you touched it. His fingers found the end of the seatbelt and he tugged it. It seemed to be stuck. He tugged harder without success and then leaned over, peering into the dim recesses between the seat and the door. A strange egg-shaped object was lying there, where nothing had been before, apparently pulled from beneath the seat by his efforts, and now firmly wedged. Bobby bent slower, working it loose, bringing it to his lap, together with the end of the seatbelt suit to which it was attached. He blinked at it, fascinated. Robert Black Sr. Guiding the car along the highway at 60 miles an hour wasn't looking anywhere but straight ahead. His profile was just like those policemen Bobby saw on television. Bobby sighed and returned his attention to the egg-shaped thing in his lap. He had never seen anything like it before. It was made of metal and was heavy, and it had odd square like bumps all over it and a funny round pin in its top, held to the end of the seat belt by a thin strand of wire. He was sure Daddy would be interested, but first he had to obey his instructions. He took to the egg shape, it came away from the tongue of the seat belt, separated also from the little pin which now dangled comically. Bobby held the egg shape in his lap and latched the belt. Daddy? Yes, son? Robert Black Sr. turned his head and stared. His face went white. Bobby could never remember Daddy's eyes seeming so big or so scary. His face was all screwed up like he had a toothache. The roar of the car motor drowned out something that Daddy was yelling. There were so many other cars racing by, thundering, bulleting along the highway. Bobby whimpered in sudden fright. His father's right arm shot out, flailing. Bobby recoiled, thinking for one awful second that Daddy was going to hit him. He hugged the egg-shaped thing to his chest and shrank against the car door to make himself smaller. Cars were hurtling forward, zooming ahead in a race for the sun and the horizon. A car horn blasted, frightening Bobby even more. Bobby! Robert Black Sr. screamed. Throw that thing out of the car! The flying trees, the ribbon of roads, the thundering motors, the four vital seconds had fled. Bobby! But Daddy! Robert Black Jr. processes in his small face crumbled in confusion. You never said to! 